Welcome, everybody, to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. I'm Pete Wright, and that there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello. Hello, Hello Nikki Kinzer. Hello. Uh, we are, uh, we're still on our organizing, uh, we're on an organizing bender. We are. It's, uh, it's summer. It's nice. It's time That's to, it's time to get cleaned up. That's right. I haven't done a thing about my clutter from last week, though. Well, all those, all those piles are still there. It's been a tough on? week. Yeah. Tough week. You know those weeks? You just get, you yeah. just get a lot of stuff to do. Always moving around. Haven't had any time to uh, to sit down, uh, but today we are going to be talking about this. Is you know this, these are some good reminders. We, this is when we've talked about organizing mistakes before, haven't we? This has been a while. I'm sure a we long have. Long time. Point. I think this is a, a really good reminder and a very timely thing to bring up because again, the sun is shining. You open the window, you turn on some music, and uh, and and you you dig in, and and uh, this is this is how you how you actually make progress without screwing it up. Once you get started, that's yeah, right. Because last right. last week we kind of talked about getting started, and and uh, yeah, this week is going to uh, help you avoid those organizing mistakes with kind of an ADHD in mind. You know, um, having having the ADHD in mind, I guess is, is a better way to say that. Yes. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Yes. You ready? Uh, well, I'm. You know, I'm always ready. But do we? Do you? Do you want to make an, an announcement? Well. <laughs> Now I'm going to be all embarrassed. Embarrassed? <laughs> I don't know why I'm being embarrassed, but um, I don't like the attention. <laughs> <laughs> you have worked it's, really hard on this, and I think you need to tell the people. It is very exciting. I just received notification this morning that um, it's official. I am a professional certified coach through the ICF. So um, I have these little letters behind my name. PCC, <laughs> which for most of the listeners out there, they're going to be like, I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but people that are in the industry, you do know what I'm talking about. And uh, it's a big deal. And yes, I've worked very hard for it. It's been um, a lot of education, a lot of client hours, a lot of uh, crossing the, the T's and dotting the I's and paperwork and, and being observed. And I mean, it's just a lot, it, it's a lot. <laughs> so I, I have to say, I'm glad it's over with. I'm glad I passed and, um, I am, I'm going to be celebrating a little bit. It is, it's, a, it's an exciting achievement for sure. It is. Congratulations. You, uh, you know, you, I know this has been a big one and you are, you're one of those, uh, uh you're always in some sort of education certification program. You've been doing this for a long time, but this one feels like a, a real milestone. So congratulations yes. to you. It is. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm taking the summer off. <laughs> yes, you are well-deserved. No, well, not off from working. I, you can yes. still call me as a coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean it that way, but I am not taking any educational courses on coaching this summer. Um, that I'm taking off. <laughs> that is great. Good, good, good for you. So, okay, before we get into organizing mistakes, you can learn a lot more about Nikki and her brand new letters behind yes. her name. If you go to the website, takecontroladhd.com, get to know us better, get to know the show better, subscribe for free uh, right there on the website or by email or, uh, uh, you know, for free on your favorite podcast uh, application of choice. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD and call us 503 664 for ADD, get your voice and your thoughts, your wishes, hopes, and dreams on this very show. Thank you so much uh, for everybody for listening. So, all right, now let's talk about organizing mistakes. Mm-hmm. Well, Where do we you start? Know the, the first one, I, I know we've talked about in several different ways um, that it's just come up in conversation, but buying that organizing product first is a huge mistake that people make. Not intentional. I mean, I think that, you know, when you go into the container store, you go into, you know, Ikea, Bed Bath & Beyond, all of those wonderful stores, um, there's this promise, you know, that this product is going to organize you, that if you just buy this one product, it's going to change your life. I'm sorry, but that's just not true. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't work that way. You know what's so funny about this one is that it's it's one we have talked about it so often, and yet there is an allure oh, it's, to it's these so stores. Cool. I love containers and boxes and storage things and things with clasps and buttons, and I love them. I love them. 
So I, I always start there. That's my instinct. I always start there. And I know I know I shouldn't. We've talked about it. You have you have you have instructed me, you have taught me, <laughs> but I love it so much. I know, I know. So we have to try to avoid that. And uh, and it's not that to say that those wonderful little gadgets don't help us or assist us in our organizing efforts. They, they certainly do have a place, um, but it comes later. It comes after you do the sorting and the purging and you know exactly what it is um, that you're keeping and what you need that organizing product for. And that's that's the key. And, and you know, I, I think I shared this a long time ago, but I made the mistake when I first started my organizing organizing business back in 2008, I went to the container store. I was so excited. I bought all this stuff for my office because um, I wanted my office to look like, you know, their advertising. It was well you know? organized. Yeah. And so I bought these like filing boxes and paper boxes and everything. I got them home and see the container store for me is about two hours away. So this was not a convenient, oh, I can just return these. I brought them back to, to where I live and half of the items didn't fit. And then I really didn't even know what I needed them for. (laughs) So I was just stuffing crap in them, to be honest. I mean, it was just like, okay, well, I got to put something in there. And, you know, it was just such a waste of time and money. And I mean, I learned it the hard way. It just doesn't make sense. You got to know it has to have a purpose. It has to have a purpose. And the only way to do that is to is to sort and uh, purge your stuff first. So that's the first thing you want to avoid. That's awesome. That yeah. you were just stuffing crap. In I, them. Was. I was. Like, <laughs> man, oh, this fits. That takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, it really does because you know it. Yeah, talk about <laughs> overwhelm. It was all, you know, I just remember even walking in there and thinking, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. And, and I think that that you know this was pre-experience, right? I mean, I really was going in green, and oh, so yeah. I bought into the promise too of. Oh, wow. Look at this and look at that. But, um, I don't know. Sometimes you don't even need those things either because you find that you don't keep as much as you, you thought you were going to keep and just putting it on a shelf is good enough. So, you know, I do think you, you kind of figure out what you really need, what you don't. Right. Right. But uh, that's great. All right. What is number two? Okay. So number two is sort of, um, understanding that there's a difference between sorting and, and organizing. And so oftentimes when I would work with clients or, um, even myself, I get stuck kind of doing this sometimes too, is you're going to be sorting something and then you kind of start thinking about where the kept stuff is going to go. And so then you jump to this step of organizing and trying to figure out where its home is and placing it. And, and you know, the distinction between the two, I think, is that just making sure you're doing your sorting first and purging and just get the stuff out of the house right now, that that's your focus. Um, I think that if you just focus on eliminating and getting rid of the things that you don't need and not worrying about where the stuff is going to go, it's going to feel less overwhelming. Um, and you're going to see more progress because you're not zigzagging back and forth, you know, between yeah. sorting and organizing. Um, so this would be something just to kind of keep in mind that, you know, if you read my book, the ebook that you can get on Amazon, uh, Taking Control of Your Space, there's a, it's a it's a step-by-step process. And you know, I, I have those steps in the order that they're in for a reason. And so that's just what I want people to avoid is just to remember that when you're sorting, you're sorting, organizing comes later. It's a real discipline, uh, too. I mean, it, that's another one that there is an allure to, to feel like, um, like you're making progress. And so, you know, you start organizing in the middle of things, Mm-hmm. Just because it it gives you that faint hope that you're moving forward, and and so it's it, it's it, there's a a real draw. It takes a real discipline to stop and say, you know, to be methodical about this. It's and a process. Yeah, That's it right. is a process. It's a process. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, with that process, as you're sorting and purging. Uh, a lot of people can get stuck on making decisions. And this is specifically true for ADHD. It, it can be very difficult to make decisions because you you really want to look at all the options and um, you really just don't know what to do. And, and I think we did a, a podcast, it was a long time ago, but do you remember it was sort of like the 
I'll use it later really wasn't a good excuse for someone with ADHD because there was always going to be a later. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I remember that conversation. Yeah. And, and I think that that's the, that's kind of what I'm you know talking about here. Um, so what I want people to try to do when they're first starting at least and getting kind of that momentum build building up is don't worry, don't get stuck on the hard decisions, but just keep making the easy ones so that you keep going. I don't want you to, to, get stuck on something and get so frustrated that you just give up on the whole process altogether. Yes. And that's a mistake. Yeah. Because it's, you're you're gunning for velocity here. You want to build up your, your forward motion. Exactly. So make those easy decisions. If it's hard, then take the pressure off yourself and just go back to it later. Um, There is never a time where you can't sort and purge your items. It's not like you just get this one chance and that's it. So you can always come back later, but definitely keep the momentum and don't give up and, and make those easy decisions. And we all have those easy decisions, you know, whether it's stuff that's broken or stuff that we just don't care about, Mm -hmm. or it's trash, or we just really, you know, we just know instinctively within seconds that this is something that could be given away. So, so do it, do it, do it, use the force. Yes. That's right. All right. Okay, so the fourth tip I have is is very specific with ADHD, um, and this is organizing a space by yourself. Um, it's a mistake sometimes. Now, I'm not saying that you can't ever do it by yourself, but if you're really struggling, um, I really, you know, encourage you. There is no shame for asking from, you know, asking for help from people and, it, you know, use a body double. We've talked about that before. And, and what a body double is just to remind folks is that it's just having somebody in the room with you while you're working on your sorting or purging or, or whatever it is. And they could be helping you or they could be doing something completely different, but they serve a couple of different purposes. One is they certainly can keep you focused just because they're in the room Um, and they keep you, you know, on task. They can help you if you want them to. Um, But there's just something about that presence of, okay, there's this person here. They know what I'm doing and I need to keep doing it, even if it's for a short period of time. But that body double can make a big, huge difference. If you can afford to have a a professional organizer come and help you, I think that's great. The only thing that I would say for the folks that have ADHD is make sure your professional organizer um, understands how to organize someone with ADHD. Um, And I just had a conversation with, with a client the other day who hired a PO, professional organizer, to come into her house. Did you say that, PO? PO, yeah, in the industry. That's not a very dignified acronym. Well, sounds too much. It sounds like PU or BO. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, (laughs) geez. (laughs) I'm just saying, don't, don't hire, don't hire a BO. That's all I'm saying. Don't hire a PU. It's just not very dignified. (laughs) You can hire a PCC though. You can hire a PCC or a BD, a body double, but don't hire a BO. Yeah. Don't do that. You were saying? Okay. Hi. Yes. What, what I was, what was I saying? Oh, so I was talking to somebody who has hired a professional organizer, which I think is fantastic. Um, but there was some question about how much she knew about ADHD. And one of the things that the professional organizer had recommended was, well, and it was like, it's so hard to explain, but there was something about where she was placing her pots and pans in the kitchen and where they were currently was working for her. But the professional organizer kind of felt like, well, they should be somewhere else. And so I just was talking to my client saying, you know, you just have to let the the professional organizer know because I mean, her intention and I'm not slamming her, her intention is good. It's not to, it's trying to make her life easier is what she's trying to do. But I, I, I said, just make sure she understands that the stuff that's working for you, you don't want to change, Right. (laughs) you know, you need to focus on the things that aren't working for you and how your brain works and how you think. And somebody that maybe doesn't understand ADHD might have a difficult time, you know, getting out of that. And so that's why I say that. I mean, I'm a huge supporter of professional organizers, so I don't want to, um, come, you know, come across negative in any way. I just think it's important that if you have ADHD, that you have someone who understands it, you know, yeah, Uh, yeah. that's what I think. So, 
Okay, so hopefully I didn't make anybody mad. <laughs> well, I, I, I just hope everybody has showered today. Because of the BO. Because of the BO and the PU. You, totally, I get that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is my last tip. Okay. Uh, if you're trying to follow a system that you've read in an organizing book, except for mine, because mine works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kidding aside, um, you have to just really be open-minded when you're reading these books about organizing. Um, unless the book is, spe- again, specific to ADHD, you have to keep in mind the way your brain is wired and the way that you think. And some of these systems sometimes can get too complicated. And so we want to keep things simple. We want to keep things easy. And, um, you know, if you find something that resonates with you, just be okay with, with being flexible and about, you know, being, being okay with tweaking it and knowing that it's not just this way or no way. It's not just, you know, black and white that you can have some gray in there and, and, um, and that's okay. So, I, you yeah, know, this is my favorite, my favorite tip on the list because it, it's one that we, I don't think we have done a show on in the past and it's one that is so incredibly important. And, you, you know, I think for my experience is that you have to think about organizing systems more like fishing, uh, which is, you know, you look at a lot of different systems and you catch really good elements from many of them. Oh, so true. I love that. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so, uh, it, because if you go, I, I guarantee it, if you go with a system that is, is designed for the general populace, you will feel like a failure when it doesn't work for you. Yeah, and that yeah. is dis- so destructive. It is. It is. It is. Especially when there's, you know, a couple pieces in that system that may really right. you know, work for you, that may really be strong. And and then to just give up on it all together because you're trying to follow it, yeah. you know, step by step, word for word. It just doesn't it doesn't work. And even in my book, I will say I, I make, you know, little comments here and there. Tweak this, you know, yeah. make this your own. Um, and I think that that's important. That yeah, really important. That. Don't, yeah. don't let your inability to make someone else's system work for you be a reflection on you. Absolutely. Well, and something that I want to loop this around with what you were saying at the beginning of the call when you said, well, I, I haven't really worked on any projects this week. You know, it's the same thing. That's okay. I mean, it's yeah. the same thing with, with these organizing systems. It's like they may back you may backside a little bit you may have a week or two where you're not doing anything and that's all right it doesn't mean that it's failed it doesn't mean that you're that you failed in some way it just means you got to pay attention mm-hmm. you just got to okay you're going to do something different today you're going to do a couple new action steps tomorrow if it's important and if it's a priority and and it works you know for you it's interesting because I, you know, I, I built my business around organizing and then I went into ADHD coaching. I love organizing. I mean, this is certainly a big piece of my expertise, but at the same time, I believe that organizing has its time and its place. And if you had a busy week because you had sick kids or you had kids, you know, running around or you're traveling for work or, had an anniversary with your spouse, whatever it is, that stuff is more important. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's always more important. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, we talk about these tips and I, I, I write about these things and I certainly am a believer in organized life, but I'm a believer in balance and happiness and, and no judgment, just, you know, accepting who we are and, and all of that. So yeah, yeah. there you have it. I like it. I'm sticking to it. All right. Good tips. Uh, so yeah. Before you wrap up, yes. um, next week, if you happen to be listening to these shows in order and on time, next week I want to do a show on creative organizing with ADHD. And I had uh, put this question out to Facebook and to Twitter, and I've gotten some great ideas from people um, with tips that they have that they've used that work for them. And so I'm asking the audience here, if you are listening to this, um, and even if this is past the show, I still want to hear what has worked for you so that we can share that with other people. Cause I, 
I uh, am really interested in knowing about real stuff, yes. real, real good tips that people are like, this has changed my life or this has really made a difference for me. And you know what? This would be a great opportunity to call 503-664-5036644 ADD and and just leave your tip on the voicemail line and we will include your voice in the show as we as we share your tip. So that would be a, a great opportunity to to give us a ring one more time. 503-664-4 ADD. I feel like a telethon. I know, right? <laughs> Nikki's kids. Oh, <laughs> weird. That's <laughs> creepy and weird. <laughs> there was a line. There was the. You know, sometimes you got to test it just so you know where it is. Yeah, you know where it is now. Now we know where it is. We yeah. don't need to do that again. You don't need to ever do that again. <laughs> uh, this was good. Any other old news? New news? New business? No, nope. I think we're good. Standing down. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.